Trina here, this Emperor Wheelie. Welcome back to my channel. Well, as you can see, I've had a few changes to my uh, YouTube setup. For a uh, start, the wallpaper that was in my room is down and it's been painted uh, by my dad's friend. And also, I got this uh, motif here. Oh, sorry, dogs, who would have them? I found this in uh, B&M, as I was saying in one of my other videos. Uh, it, it says, life doesn't have to be perfect to be beautiful, which is true really. My room isn't finished yet. I will give you a room tour once my uh, bedroom is finished. But for now, I'm still waiting for my dad's friend to come back and finish. Uh, feature wall as I call it, or the wall at the top of my bed, uh, but he's going to come tomorrow, hopefully, if he can make it, and give it one last coat, and then I'll, I'll give you all a room tour. Today's video is about uh, what the difference is between being on a normal ward, if you're admitted to hospital, or being in a isolation room, as I was. The last time I was in hospital with my meningitis scare, they put me in an isolation room on my own because of the type of meningitis that I had. I had viral meningitis. There are two types of meningitis. One is a bacterial meningitis, which is the, the more severe one. And there is viral meningitis, which is the less severe one. And that was the one that I had, although it is very contagious. If they had have put me in a normal ward, it would have spread to the other patients. So they did put me into the isolation room to stop this. And I also had barrier nursing until my bloods came back clear. They also had a like a plastic curtain they could pull over a corner of the room or where the door was. And they used that area to get what I call suited up. They would have to put gloves and aprons and masks on. And then uh, they would come in to see me once they came past the curtain. And once uh, my blood came back clear, the curtain came down and I was able to leave the, the room as I pleased. Now, in the hospital that I was in, which was the, the Royal Victoria in Belfast, I was on a mixed purpose ward. And we did have uh, normal beds, like where there would have been four or five beds. And we had separate rooms as well, or the isolation rooms. Now, here in Northern Ireland, they tend to keep the isolation rooms for people that are more severe. For example, they would put people who have contagious conditions in private rooms or they would put people who say have a lowered immune system, maybe they're going through chemo or they're uh, going, going through uh, something else like a, a, a bone marrow transplant or something that completely destroys their immune system so they can't be exposed to other patients because it would risk their lives basically but they had a normal ward as well norm well normal bays as well and they would be for the less severe patients say something that would not affect their immune system uh, like maybe just having a standard operation or standard procedure or something there was one really funny incident that happened on my ward while I was there this guy was on a normal day and he was uh, walking up and down the ward complaining and shouting and moaning to the nurses about why he didn't have a private room and everybody else did and why he deserved one more than everybody else but the, the sister who is basically the nurse that's in charge of everybody else and the, I don't know what they're called in the in the other parts of the world, but here they're called sisters. It's always been that way, I, I don't know why, but uh, 
her sister basically tore him a new one, if you get what I mean. I could hear her down, I was down at the opposite end of the hallway and I could hear her from my room, even with the door closed. Uh, she said something something like, you are fit enough to walk up and down this ward. You do not need an isolation room. Be glad that you are able to sit on a normal ward. I'm sure that many of the people who are in the isolation rooms would gladly change places with you. And I... I, when I heard that, I, I just smiled because this guy had been walking up and down the ward every single day that I was there, complaining. They had another patient in, in the room behind me who had dementia, and he walked, in, he walked in and frightened the life out of the poor old man. Like, so you get them like it's some people, you know. But in an isolation room, you are compared to... Uh, confined to one room until your bloods come back normal. Now, as they didn't have enough room in the ambulance to take my wheelchair with me, they uh, confined me to my bed. They had the bed wheels up, or I think they were called cot sides, and I had to ask for everything. I wasn't well enough to move anyway, so it was better uh, that they did that. But I would have gladly changed places with that guy any time. I mean, he could have had what I had for a change. Uh, but that's what people don't realise about being in isolation, is you're confined to one room. And boy, is it boring. Uh, they didn't let me out on... Um, the hospital grounds until the third day and even then I wasn't allowed to go outside and I had to tell them where I was going and, and when I would be back which is pretty normal but uh, still. This guy seemed to think that the private rooms or the, the isolation rooms were a luxury. They're not a luxury, believe me. All I had was uh, a hole in the wall to look at where somebody had pinched the TV. Uh, and they never even bothered to fix a hole in the wall. It was as well I had my smartphone with me, which is now why I, I carry my uh, hospital bag if I'm going into the hospital, so at least I have something to do. Uh, but you get them in every walk of life. Like I would have gladly changed places with this guy, but anyway. Now, I was lucky enough, I was only in for three days. Even though they pumped me full of antibiotics and antivirals, um, I wasn't in for as long as other people that are in uh, isolation rooms. Uh, there was a guy across the hall from me. Now, it was a mixed sex ward. And uh, this guy was in having a bone marrow transplant. He was there for six months. Uh, and my friend uh, Liz, if you're watching, hi Liz, uh, she's only just got out after spending seven weeks in hospital with uh, C. diff, which is another horrible uh, uh, disease as well. So if you're watching this, I hope you're feeling better soon. Well, if you find this video uh, informative, uh, please hit, hit like and comment below. And thank you for watching and if you're new please uh, hit subscribe and ring the notification bell as YouTube does not notify you when I upload a video unless you hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.